And I thank all of you for being faithful because you know what they say. When people hear that pastor's going to be away, they stay at home. This is the best time to catch up on bowling and whatever they watch while they're at home. So you call and say, oh, they were there? And somebody thought I was preaching in, in, out of town today. Uh, and so I, I know there's people probably thought we weren't here Friday, ain't going to be there Saturday. But I thank the faithful people. And give yourself a round of applause for being faithful you know, in the things of God. Because, you know, there was 500 people that God invited to come. Jesus said, I'm, I'm talking to 500 of you. If you come over and see me later, I'm going to fill you all with the Holy Spirit. And you're going to have power. But only 120 can. So 380 missed out on the power of God. And I believe that the message today <coughs> is a message where those of you that are here, God will fuel you. That God will really inspire you today. Uh, Let's stand and pray and I'll go to this message because I, I did this last night at the hotel and I was up kind of late with it, but I know that God's going to do something great through this word. I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you right now for everything you're going to do today. We open up our hearts as we open up our Bibles. And Lord, we just ask you to come fill us with your knowledge, with your love, your grace, your power, your mercy, and your plan for us. Just give us the ability to stand strong and steadfast every day in our faith. Unwavering, God, not looking at the world and longing to go back like Lot's wife. But, God, we want to stand strong and be planted and rooted here in our church and in the Word of God. And I pray also for the visitors, Lord God, that you let the residue of your anointing remain upon them. Wherever they go back, to whatever church they belong, or into their household. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. And everyone say it. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Now, in this church, don't get, it, don't get, the people get excited in this church. You may see some clapping, you may see some people doing backflips and cartwheels and headbutts and high fives and handshakes, but don't trip. It's all, we got safety gear on. It's called the Spirit of God. Amen. We got angels standing around saying, I'm glad to see somebody on earth get excited like we do in heaven. How many can say amen? amen. And, and, and I'm going to be preaching today from Luke 22. But I, before I get into the scripture I want to uh, talk about, uh, I, I just I want to read an illustration because I, I you know I like quotes and illustrations like what my son just said about uh, you know, uh, God can't use you mightily until uh, you know, He wounds you deeply. Uh, and put the, as well as there's a lot of quotes that we like um, to put out, and I believe that that's a great quote that a lot of people uh, really didn't know about. But I, he, he's always bringing up those quotes. Um, there's an illustration I wanted to, I remember, let me make sure I, I remember right. If a woman took her husband to the doctor, and he had been ill for some time, and of course he was feeling like he was going to die, he didn't get any help. And so, the wife took him to the doctor, and the doctor went in to see him, and the doctor comes out like they do. And the wife said, yes, doctor, is my husband going to be okay? And he said, well, uh, your husband's going to be okay, but he can't be subjected to any stress. So you've got to be sure you cater to him. Make sure you don't argue with him. Make sure you don't try to get him to do any hard work, which means you'll have to do everything around the house. And let him just, let him just sit there and be a king for a while. And so the woman took off, took her husband, got in the car, his husband, in a loving way, looked over at his wife, and he said, honey, what did the doctor say to you? And she said, well, baby, he said you're going to die. <laughs> and, you know, when we think about that, <laughs> how many of us know that whenever we're sick, we need to see a doctor? But the first thing a doctor does when you go to see him is what? He takes your temperature. See, God is like that. Some of us are in need right now. And the first thing God's going to check is your spiritual temperature. What is your spiritual temperature today? Because there's a lot of people that they don't have the temperature that you have being here today. See, being here today means that you're hot, that you're, you're on fire for God. And that's what I'm going to preach about today, how to stay on fire for God. Because there's a lot of people that come in and shout, cry at the altar, go home and say, man, the message was powerful. But then but they were Sunday saints, but then Monday ain't. They are not people on fire. You know, in the Bible, there's only three temperatures that the Bible talks about. There's hot, 
there's cold, and then there's lukewarm. Lukewarm people, God can't stand. This is his own words if you read it in the Bible. He says, and uh, he says that I will vomit you out. So lukewarm Christians can turn this stomach to Jesus. He says, if you're lukewarm, I will vomit you out. I won't punt you out, I will vomit you out. And lukewarm people always have a tendency to look at the cold people and say, well, at least I'm better than that sinner. Oh, really? Matthew 24 talks about the cold person. It says, then they will deliver you up, in verse 9 of Matthew 24, to the tribul uh, they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations because of my name. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, will even hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end will be saved. See, so many people out there, because then you offend them. They're like, you think you're some kind of holy roller. You think you're better than me. And I, I told you before, I had somebody say, hey, you know, Starbucks, you think you're better than me. I said, I don't think I'm better than you. I just think I'm better off than you. Because I used to be out there all messed up, not walking with God, thinking I knew it all, thinking that I can just uh, serve him my way. And that's the essence of religion. Religion means my way that I made toward God. And then relationship is God making his way down to me. And that's what God has always wanted. But a cold person don't understand that. Their hearts are cold. They're cold because they've been let down. They've been manipulated. They've been hurt. They've been betrayed. They've been molested. They've done all these things. And their heart got calloused and cold. They're very cold. And the Bible says they become lawless. That means that the laws of God don't apply to them. They say that's good for you, but not for me. You know, we live in a time where we got the iPod and now we got the iGod. See, on your iPod or iPlush or, I, or iPod, uh, touch or iPhone, you can just easily pick which application suits your life. And people do that with their iGod. They pick which applications in the Bible best suit the life I feel like living right now. Can somebody say amen? But I'm here to tell you that that won't work. That will only make people grow cold because of their lawlessness. But whoever endures till the end is the one that shall be saved. This is the people that get upset because of the way we believe in Jesus. They get offended by his name when you speak it at work or at the store. They think your strong belief is more than what's needed. I say it's just more than what you're used to. Yes, that's a commercial. <laughs> you ever heard it? Remember GMC? It's not more than you need. It's just more than you used to. I like that, so I use it. Because no relationship with him, or they have no relationship with him, they become cold. They become sinful. Oh, yes. They'll sing Kumbaya, they'll give a dollar to a homeless person at the store, and they feel like that just gave them a ticket into heaven. But that's not the way it works. That's no indicator of your spiritual temperature. How many can say amen? amen. Their hearts are like stone. It's unpenetrable. And I've had people come in here in the first two years. We've only, we're only two years old. We've had it packed out, and then we've had it down for a few people. It's like people's heart grow cold, and, and, and you can't enter. Nothing goes in, and nothing comes out. They won't open up and say, I'm struggling at home. I'm struggling, Pastor. I don't pray. I don't pick up my Bible, and I cuss everybody out the moment I get mad. Their hearts are becoming like stone. But the one I wanted to talk about was the more interesting one, the lukewarm. The lukewarm Christian is worse than any cold-hearted person ever. I like what he says in, uh, to the church in uh, Laodicea. He says, I know your works, that you're neither hot nor cold. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, this is what a lukewarm person always thinks, because you say, I am rich, I'm wealthy, have no need of nothing. I do not know, and, uh, but he says, but you do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. In other words, he's saying, he's not talking about money. Christians struggle with money because it's hard for us to be trusted with money because a lot of us come from not having money. And you know what? We don't like to even give money. You know, one of the hardest things, you know, I understand how a dentist feels. 
You know what I mean? When I have to do the offering and everything, I feel like a dentist because not with everybody. Some of you are, are givers. You love the Lord and you understand giving. But for some, they want to shout and do backflips and everything. But when it comes time to giving, it's like popping teeth without any that uh, nobody can. <laughs> People are fearful. This is going to hurt. It's going to hurt what? It's going to hurt my chances of going to Walmart after church after service. <laughs> And so they become lukewarm and they think they're in need of nothing. I'm here to tell you that our giving...